Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I'm joined by VP of Operations and the guy who actually kind of runs the company now, Brett Chittum. <laughs> so Warning. We are answering questions, and I wanted to answer this specific question, which we'll leave to the forum link here. It says, from break fix to MSV, how to make the transition. And this is a discussion started by Dave over in the forums. This is all public, and of course, I'll be linking to this below. And I talk back and forth a little bit, but I think there's more to the story I wanted to offer. And I have done in the past a video, an overview of a managed IT services offering we have here at Lawrence Systems. And, you know, there's some back and forth, which by the time you read this post, it will probably be longer after the publishing of this video. And this video will go included in the post kind of meta where everything's going to get accumulated right. together. But me and Brett were talking about this this morning and we wanted to kind of address it. So I talked about what we offer, but how we offer it and how you get to that offering is a subject of great discussion. Wouldn't you say, Brett? I would. And it's funny within this, within this post in the forum, it, he, he asks some questions that are asked by a lot of different people. Um, do I need to have this? Do I need, you know, there are a lot of specific questions he's asking that people, there's misconceptions out there. Yeah. And uh, some of the misconceptions that are dispelled in there right off the top is like, do you assign like a tech to a client? And it's actually a little bit different than that. And let's start here, tooling. And mm -hmm. the question was asked like, do you need an RMM? That's a discussion. Maybe I'll do a video on if someone asks me. The answer is still yes right now right. in September of 2021. Uh, it is the most effective way to get things done and end of story. It's mm -hmm. uh, grandstanding to uh, have all the complicated discussion about we shouldn't have these powerful tools, but if you don't have powerful tools, you can't get the work done. You'd have to have more people doing the work. So that's right. kind of, we, it we creates end up coming back to this. Yeah, it's efficiencies. Right. Um, I mean, absolutely. It would be great if every company could afford a team of IT people mm -hmm. internally. So we would have no threats from uh, bad software, right. but we'd still have threats from bad software because it, there's still a lot of bad software out there and it'd be just <laughs> challenging to um, have these people securing everything and it wouldn't be cost effective for the clients. So yeah. And right. second, this is not an endorsement for any of the tooling or any tool in particular, whatever tool set you decide, which of course is a completely different complicated topic. And I do not have time to try every different RMM tool and every stack of tools out there, but I will answer at least the question that will be asked is which one are you using, which right now we are using enable as the RMM tool platform as the backup platform. Uh, we use Sentinel one for antivirus and Huntress. Yeah. Uh, that's the generalized uh, stuff that we do. And, you know, we have remote access tools like screen connect. But don't get caught up on analysis process. Today's talk is about process, not about the tools. Um, but I at right. least want to answer that question so people know what tools we use. Because that'll the first thing is, well, I just want to use tools that you're using. Cool. I don't have any offer codes for any of them. Um, so go ahead and use them. Yeah. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Uh, I think the, the problem comes in first when people ask the question of, I want to transfer from, you know, problem brought to me, problem solved to charging and what are you charging for? That's kind of the gist of managed services. And the reality is you take all the clients, you get them on some type of program because we need them constantly updated. As we know, right. patch Tuesday is at least when Microsoft patches, but everything else has patches that are even more frequent. And despite automatic patching mechanisms, we all know those are not always uh, as functional as they should be. Matter of fact, who fixes yeah. the automatic patch mechanisms when they don't auto patch? And that comes back to us, the MSP. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how many problems can be solved if it was updated, especially when there's a major flaw in a product that's exploited. Uh, for example, browsers are constantly in need of updates because there's a constant attack on browsers because they're the threat surface and the way we interact with the greater world. Therefore, a flaw in them and being actively exploited could be a big problem. This is where we come in with managed services. The other misconception uh, that was kind of brought up in there is how we assign these problems. And essentially all the clients go onto a dashboard. We're going to look every morning and probably what's uh, Eric doing right now, looking at backups, maybe Brett. Yes, absolutely. What came through on our ticketing system. It's, yeah. Yeah. It, it's important because um, the writer that started this, Dave, he, um, he, he asked the, a number of questions. I wanted to poke on the liability one though, a little bit, if we can get to that yeah. at some point in this. So, um, what are you liable for? What aren't you liable for? It's kind of an insurance question, but when you're, when you have 
a a true system that you've you've imposed on so there is some liability point point to that and you can actually get insurance to cover you in that but i think you're more liable if there's things you don't offer a client right if you're not working on patching any of these things and this is typical because if the client doesn't have the mentality this yeah. is something you deal with as a break fix as in people bring you their problems um and they always say, well, why didn't you tell me about this? And it's right. it's not easy. You can send out newsletters and notices. Hey, people, you should be updating. But if you don't have active engagement with the client and you don't have active access and persistent access to the system so you can see the status of their system to see if mm -hmm. there's a problem with their system, to see if their hard drives are full or if they're uh, some type of failure notices that you're getting with a service, you're not being proactive. The client's being very reactive and people, well, they quickly adjust to the norm of, I don't know, I always click okay to that message. What do you, what does the error message actually say? I don't, I don't know, I click okay so I can get my work done. It's the right. typical thing that people do. And that's not necessarily what you want them doing. But if you're actively engaging with them and then you don't have that question coming up, of why didn't you tell me? So you go through, you're backing it up all the time. And backup failures are one of those things. Like, you know, mm -hmm. the staff, uh, tickets are created automatically. We also log in manually. And then we do occasional testing of the backups to make sure they actually work. Uh, those are all these little things that we're doing all the time to make sure that the machine is running, the machine is viable because untested backups are just wishful thinking. <laughs> it's not just looking for these tickets, but all the clients, when they're in one system, get addressed as one right. system. To us, every one of our managed clients is in just one big dashboard or pool, if you will, where we monitor these things. And you manage by exception. And you, you end up noticing uh, trends that are interesting. Actually, one of the funnier yeah. ones I noticed last Tuesday, Brett, was uh, we had a big storm. And I could yep. tell where the storm was because we have uh, clients kind of spread across the state here. And you could see where the storm was when we had power outages by the notices that came in. Like, oh, look, yeah. it just hit the uh, this area. Oh, look, it just hit this area where we also see coming across to us now. Yeah. And we'd see like a UPS notice go and uh, mm -hmm. things like that to send you a ticket to go, Hey, there's, there's a power outage here, yeah. <laughs> you know? So these are, uh, but you treat the clients like that because reality is when you're a manager, right, they're all running windows. Mm -hmm. So that's your primary thing is making sure windows update. They all have a web browser because that's pretty much how we get our work done these days. Right. So we're making sure their browser update and they all need backups. Those are very primary things, but of course, secondary things, um, secondary the way we look at them primary to the client are going to be still other uh, line of business applications, making sure those are up to date and support mm -hmm. and being able to support them quickly. Like when they call, Brett, how fast do we uh, get a hold of when someone calls us for a problem? How fast are we at addressing that issue? Um, we're it's almost immediate. I actually have a, a system set up within our ticketing system that notifies me if we haven't responded to somebody within 90 minutes. We yes. try to get on top of things right away. The goal with all the technicians is a ticket comes in, someone grabs a ticket, assigns yep. it to themselves and goes forward and runs with it. They don't want the 90 minute mark where Brett asks the question, hey, guys, because then they get to be talked to by Brett. He's Who's like, handled ticket 2,472. Yeah. Brett's like, dad, hey, uh, guys, you know, <laughs> there's a notice that's here. It's in my inbox now because someone didn't deal with it. Right. Um, Things actually do as much as it just rolls uphill of management. So when people mm -hmm. do things, it goes up. Uh, but generally speaking, if you build a good team, uh, they understand they need to be on top of whatever the issues are. The other thing you need, you know, like the debate of whether or not, as I said, the RMM tool, one of the reasons you need the powerful tools that we have is because we see a problem. Customer, even mm -hmm. if it's a problem they had, like for some reason, my QuickBooks file won't open. That's a common ticket, unfortunately, yeah. because users and they don't always interact with technology at the same level we do. But being able to solve that very quickly for them means we can remote in, we see the ticket open, Mm -hmm. Maybe call the client, maybe just message them back if we can. Or a lot of times just jump on there and solve it. They're like, hey, can you log into my computer? Because they know they know how our process works. Their question isn't, can you fix QuickBooks? Can you log on to my computer right now and fix QuickBooks? Right. Someone will see it, grab it, boom, fix it. And all they're doing is opening the file. We, you know, Someone saved a copy of their QuickBooks, opened it, <clears throat> and opened the old copy and realized yeah. there's not changes from the other people. There are little things, as you know, dealing with users. And what you're doing, though, is giving these clients a peace of mind that they can call you, that they can get this problem solved and get it quickly. If you go on the other side, like I mentioned earlier, where, well, we don't want to have persistent access to our clients because it, it's a big threat surface. And you're not wrong about it being 
a threat and you need to keep these tools up to date and secure the tools that we use to manage this are very powerful. But the other side, being able to go in there, quickly see what the client does and go, you're opening the wrong version of the QuickBooks file, open the right one and hit save and be done within five minutes won't occur if you don't have these tools. You're like, hold on, let me get you to the website. Let me get you connected. Download our client, download our support tool. Right. Um, Brett's even jumped in. I mean, when, you know, Brett will jump in there and fix I will do support like calls. I love doing that. Now I can't always handle every one of them. Yeah. But, but it's, it's that concept and that's what you're charging for. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Brett, from the other side of this, before you were in tech, you had, uh, would you have 27 insurance offices? <laughs> something yeah, that like I was that. managing over and, and really working over and, and, and helping to build those businesses. But you I, used outside IT support and that's what you wanted was a peace of mind going, I want to make sure my staff has somebody to call to get things done. Yeah. You didn't Absolutely. want to just call a different person every time and you would prefer them to be proactive and keeping things up to date. Mm -hmm. So you're from the complete, before you sat in that chair, from the other side of the world that you yeah. were on, this is what you wanted as a business owner. I it, it, That's that peace of mind, you know, and, and, and that, that, that really the sense that somebody's going to be there when I need them. You know, he all, he mentioned about, you know, having one person handle a client and you and I talked about that a, a little bit prior to this, 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 um, the video here. And, you can do that, but I don't, people don't mind talking to a different person as long as their problem is handled. Now, if you want to hire 30 people and it's funny, you and Riley in your live stream last week, you talked about what's your biggest cost to your business is people, right? If you want to reduce costs, you need to reduce people and create efficiencies. Your yes. RMM tool is going to do that. It's going to allow you to have less people handling more problems. Exactly. The the other thing too, this is how people get go, get aggravated is because a lot of the typical support models, especially by the large companies, is every day is a new day for them. This is where documentation comes in. The reason we know which QuickBooks file they should be opening or what their line of business application is, is because we document what those yes. things are for that particular client. So when someone says and does a ticket and says, this is the problem I'm having, we have a profile on that client. So any one of the technicians can look at the profile, understand what needs to be right. done. And then any technician becomes the knowledgeable source of information to solve that problem. And that's what makes the client happy, but they don't like, and this is a common problem because even as IT techs, we've definitely dealt with this, that when we call someone, they don't know anything that's going on. So we just keep bouncing. Can I get the fact that one person that seemed to have some clue and that's all often an internal sign that you haven't done documentation. If your customers are seeing that externally or they only are requesting the same person, first, the nature of people is to request the same person. That's one thing. And they're, hesitant when you switch going, well, instead of Eric, can you talk to Kyle? As long mm -hmm. as Kyle solves her problem, then they suddenly like Kyle and Eric. And eventually right. as different teammates here at the office solve their problem, they're like, oh, Steve was able to solve it too. Oh, Miles was able to solve it. And Brett has access to documentation. So even Brett can go, oh yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be on this printer. <laughs> so right, right. Uh, this is a part of how you create a cohesive appearance to your clients. So they're used mm -hmm. to calling you. This is how we build the brand trust with them. And overall, some of the behind the scenes of how this works, it's not it's not as complicated in some ways as people think uh, right. people. I mean, granted, when you're first picking your stack of tools, you're going to pull your hair out going, they all claim every salesperson tells me they're amazing. Which one do I choose? Um, and then everyone, they're all amazing. They're all amazing. And then when you jump in the uh, forums, everyone hates their RMM because they all mm. suck. So as IT technicians, the salespeople say they're amazing. There's a lot of amazing features they all have. Mm. And on the other side of it is they always do something you don't want them to do. And by the way, all of them, to my knowledge, right here in 2021, do not have great patch management support. Everyone claims theirs is better than the other one. And if you follow in forums, you'll find everyone just complaining about it because yeah. we're all trying to wrestle the Microsoft beast and broken update mechanisms from Microsoft and broken update mechanisms from many other companies. So the IRM tools are trying to fix all these. And uh, guess what? That's really hard. <laughs> so. right. It's it's the, it's the who moved my cheese theory. Everything keep, Microsoft keeps moving that cheese around. It's, yeah. in, it's incredible. Yeah, read that book sometime. That's a, that's yeah. an old management book. I had to read that like twenty years ago. But it's, I love it, that book. I still yeah, live by it's it. It's a simple. It's a simple short uh, short book about who moved my cheese. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this answers some of the questions behind the scenes. Or uh, I'm not sure. 
I always want to answer as much as I can about the business and right. offer my uh, information here freely. I have, like I said, no endorsements. This isn't a sales pitch. Um, this is more just wanting to have other people have a better understanding of what we do here, how you can do this as well, and how you can set things up, you know, getting the tools, building it out, offering the services. You know, mm -hmm. people will pay for the confidence that their backups aren't just being done, but someone's actually tending to making sure that they're there, that they're testing it, that not just assuming the auto update mechanism, but making sure that people here at Lawrence Systems are making sure all these right. updates are patched and all their security tools. Is there some reason a security tool isn't updating? Is the definitions out of date or the client out of mm -hmm. date on this? Uh, randomly, that happens. We don't, I, I don't even have a why sometimes. I'm like, look, it's out of date. I don't know. And sometimes we, we've had to learn some crazy command line stuff because uh, we're, we had a couple of Sentinel One agents that decided not to update. We don't know. Sentinel right. One was very helpful. We fixed it. I mentioned we used Sentinel One and we pushed the update and it worked. We don't know why out of a bunch of machines that seem to be identical, one decided it was going to slowly update the agent. I, that's what we do. And the customer is completely blind to this uh, because right. we're going to get behind the scenes on the tools. But the customer feels the confidence that when this happens or if a th because we keep it all up to date, when a threat does hit these clients, we're there, we're responsive. We know when someone clicked on something immediately. Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, if you roll back, I have a video I did about something that kind of sort of got through the mail. It definitely got through the mail filtering. And it was a Huntress and Sentinel-1 were able to see it, but we still had to quarantine the client. That gave the client, even though the client's first like, hey, how'd that get through? But they're also like, well, worst case is uh, this one workstation got locked out and we had to yeah. reload it. That was the end result, as opposed to it was not a disaster for the other 50 stations that the client has. It was a singular uh, person who was pretty insistent they wanted to open this really, whatever this dash <laughs> wants to their email. <laughs> and I mean, it set off all the alarms here. We locked it down immediately, but that responsiveness. And then we called the client because, you know, before they could even tell us like, hey, my computer doesn't do things anymore. Like, go online. We're like, yeah, we shut it down. You are we locked out <laughs> you're done the biggest threat is humans come on let's let's yeah. let's face it the biggest threat is humans and if everybody if he, being an msp was easy everybody would do it it's, it's not kind of that whole technic you know technical yeah. it's about business right if it were easy everyone would do it yeah it's not an impossible task it's just a no. very process oriented task and uh building all those processes takes time uh putting it all together making mm -hmm. getting people to document i mean our own internal people problem is uh how many times have i come in ranting why didn't we document something i mean don't <laughs> i'm not going to paint you some lie of a rosy picture that my documentation is is supreme and there's no stink in there don't worry right. there's occasionally tom has found things that are out of date because we're still humans that work here and uh then right. we fix we we look at it we remedy it because if i i look at something and this is one of those things from a management side uh, observability and what i my, mm. my very strong function i have here is looking at our tech stack and auditing things uh as opposed to working right. on them this gives me right. a chance to look at this and then you know having the discussions with the technicians how, how can we make this easier do i need to um you know update the way this works is this too hard to update or is it just you didn't feel like doing it like mm -hmm. you <laughs> and if they don't feel like doing it i send them to uh, brett for a motivational talk <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Which usually isn't too hard. We have a very no. cohesive um, team here. Yeah. And one of that, one of the 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 benefit of that is, is we all talk, and we're talking in, uh, constantly about, um, you know, hey, I just spoke with 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 this client, and they're having this issue. So if they call, can you make sure if I'm not available, can you do it? Um, yes, documentation can be slow um, sometimes yeah. in getting it in there, but we do continually have conversations so that if someone calls in most people know oh brett talked about this or kyle or steve someone's talked about this and we have an idea of what's going on yeah having all the history is great now the mm -hmm. last thing i'll leave you with is people always say, where can i learn more well this is being discussed in my forums uh my forums does have some discussions on this topic but i'll give a shout out to and this is a paid forum and i got no offer code no links no nothing uh but i think the tech tribe is a pretty yes. cool place where you can get a lot of information on managed services uh, we are paid members not even discounted members yes, we are. Uh, so that's something we pay for i also do like reddit r slash msp that subreddit actually has a mm -hmm. lot of good intelligent discussion in there um and a lot of people whining about their uh, rmms and how much they suck so if you are looking to uh argue about that reddit is a great place for that don't worry it goes on in tech tribe it's just in a private forum of people whining about how that sucks <laughs> uh, but tech tribe does have a lot it's actually uh tech tribe is much more business oriented than it is there but if you're looking for right. just another uh place to be able to do that i would 
give it a shout. So and they have specific documentation for MSPs um, from legal documents to, you know, how to's to, you know, if you're getting through the sales process, it's actually a really good, they have really good tools. We've used some of their tools. Yeah. So I, I'm just giving them a shout out for those of you that want yeah. to have some further reading. Also, let us know in the comments below or over in the forums what other topics or what piece of this topic you'd like us to dive more in detail. And me and Brett will do some more videos on this topic. So, all right. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there is a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.